Hi guys, it's Rob Ring here. So much to cover today, so <laughs> please stick around and subscribe if you uh, if you fancy um, hanging on to the last remnants of, of uh, the sanity, the poor candle of reason. So today we're going to be talking about the mental health effects of the last few months, which you may have um, which you may have noticed or, or suspected. We're going to talk about Chaz, the end of <laughs> Chaz, where these anarchists have taken over, not the good kind of anarchists, have taken over. Um, Seattle, thousands of them, led by a warlord called Raz. I'm not making this up. We're going to get into that and the, uh, the mental health of all that. We're going to, I'm going to give you some tips on how to stay sane in this um, 1984 takeover, whether you think it's accidental or deliberate. Uh, we're going to talk about Dr. Buttar, chief physician to the White House, why he's getting censored all the time, the mental health reasoning behind censorship. We're going to talk about virus patents, why people would do such a thing. We're going to talk about the Gates Foundation, and his long-standing interest, and his family's long-standing interest in eugenics, and him, and we'll get to that. So, what inspired me to make this video? What what really was the fight? Was the last straw? Uh, was I went uh, I went on YouTube today, stupidly as you do, and saw Big No No, who I've mentioned in praise and criticism. Uh, I am done with him. I've unsubscribed with him because his latest video, he is like all the corporate people are doing. I can understand why they're doing it because their businesses will get burned down if they don't. But he is doing it. Um, let me just be very clear. I think Black Lives Matter is a genius name because you can't disagree with it. It's an excellent cause, an excellent principle, an excellent ethic. But the organization itself, as I'm sure you noticed, you might not have, you might not have reason to say it in public, but obviously a bullying fascistic uh, some kind of supremacy organization who were making everyone take the knee a gun with a gun on the table at least if not to the head and every all these companies are giving thousands of pounds to this um, hate group and moral blackmail is going on almost everyone's falling for it almost everyone's approving for it and if you're the if you're seeing this and thinking this doesn't feel right don't worry you're not alone because I am 100% on board and I just want to stipulate again as I have in other videos I was a teacher in East, in East London for eight years with thousands of students um, so if you don't think if you think I think non-white lives don't matter um, maybe examine your history and what, and what you've done anyway so big no-no this moron is is all it, it, it's like a hostage video I don't know how I can describe it it's Dressed in black, the background's all black, he's groveling. I'm pleased to see it had about 200 likes and about 200 dislikes. Which, uh, you know, I thought the sanity level ratio was way lower than that, so that's that's quite good. Okay, so, I, when I saw it infiltrate even an independent mental health advice channel that I used to respect, I thought I had to uh, talk about it, because there were lots and lots of useful idiots out there. As you know, I'm sure you know, Russell Brand being one of them for uh, radical Islam. The feminist movement also turning into that on the Women's March, radical Islam, they're all wearing uh, jobs. And pretty much everyone has become a useful idiot for uh, Black Lives Matter. So, if you control people's perceptions, you control their mental health and you control their view of the world. And if every single major newspaper all at once and every news channel who are bought and sold, as I've explained before, they get told what to say for the large part. See, so suddenly you're walking in, you're seeing footage, terrifying footage of the news, China, Italy, wherever it is. Mass death, ma mass death, mass death. Unknown, uh, scary cause um, coming your way. One in time you're going to die. Everyone freaks out. Everyone's scared. Everyone self-isolates. 96% um, of people in England um, supported the self-imposed house arrest. 28% of people in England recently polled never want to be out of lockdown. And also 28% um, still believe the mainstream media. It's, it's, uh, maybe they're the same 28%. I, I'm not quite sure. But but you know what I mean. Everyone, everyone's been deliberately, accidentally scared out of their wits and there's been mass panic and mass hysteria. And I think that explains all the cognitive dissonance going on, all the wild non sequiturs, and all the, all all the um, total shutdown of any kind of opposition to any of this. Uh, an example in the UK is Peter Hitchens, who he said he hasn't received any government or police threats of any kind, but he's spoken out against lockdown from day one and pointed out that there are experts with 
there are lots of experts, but only one gets the microphone. Um, and we've not necessarily got the most reliable guy at Imperial College anyway. That that's not allowed. You're not even allowed to question what's going on. And if you are, you're called because people have bought the propaganda. Stay home, save lives. <laughs> if you leave your house, you're going to kill people. People have bought that, and so they just yell murderer at people who question whether it was a good idea to shut down all pubs, all factories, all manufacturing plants of any kind, uh, all services in a service industry economy like the UK, all flights. Uh, yesterday, um, I've lost track of the dates, but it's mid-June, I think it was, it wasn't under a million, it, sorry, it was under a million, but it was over 900,000 people applied for um, universal credit, unemployment benefit. And the airlines laid off about 700,000 people yesterday. So yeah, this isn't looking uh, too good. And people make very bad decisions during mass panic, as I'm, as I'm sure you noticed. That great bit on a screen, antiviral screen wipe, which I highly recommend if you haven't already, where he's it's, it's showing all the empty shelves in the UK, which I saw with my own eyes, <clears throat> of various foods, but toilet paper in this case. And he's watching it going, look at all these idiots going out and buying toilet paper. Now, I'm going to have to go out and buy some. Not in a panicky way, but... I really am going to have to go quick because they're all going to run out of toilet paper. Ah. <laughs> I think we are. Uh, I think um, there's a bit of that going on. So one thing that you can't, whether you think this was all accidental or all deliberate, one thing that's undeniable is our increased amalgamation with technology, mainly phones made in China, that every time you get an app, you can't get the app unless you give it permission to have access to all photos and media and documents and information and messages on your phone. And there is a very, very good video I'd recommend on Valley Tainment called China's Silent Takeover. I think it's a general, an admiral, who's been studying this for 30 years and how China has been at, at war with a lot of the world. And isn't it interesting how they're now making hostile military moves to Japan, uh, Korea, Australia? Um, it's... You know, the Chinese Communist Party has, uh, has sort of been exposed. Um, so, yeah, you can't deny whether you think this was the most innocent of origins or the most cynical of origins, that everyone has been forced to stay in their home, uh, 1994 style, amalgamating with screens even more than we were already, um, controlling people's echo chambers and tightening people's echo chambers even more than already heating up the divides between people, stirring up conflict even more than it was already. Uh, everyone's obviously frustrated, locked in the house, and this whole George, Flo George Floyd thing happens, it explodes. At least that's the narrative we're led to believe. I'm just trying to make sense of this, guys. Um, you know, I'm sure you are too. But um, So we're all staring at our phones made in China, and if you're in America, all your medicine is made in China, or most of it, pharmaceuticals. So... Let's take a non-naive hat for a minute. Let's say a country makes a military move by sending out a destabilizing virus, or you know, which happens. Countries do things like that, biological warfare, etc. Um, they then lie about it to everyone, cover up the fact people can get it. The University of Southampton said 95% of all the death and economic disruption would have been avoided if the WHO in China hadn't lied to people for like six weeks and then followed Taiwan's example and didn't censor Taiwanese journalists and Chinese journalists. Um, so yeah, they send maybe send out a virus and while everyone's locked up, uh, clapping for the NHS, you, you build a load of 5G towers, which might sound conspiratorial, but I'd recommend watching Dr. Buttar, B-U-T-T-A-R, uh, advisor to the White House physician about the, de the very detrimental effects of 5G, 60 gigahertz going out, not just to humans, to anything with cells, okay? <laughs> if you have calcium in your cells, you're not going to enjoy 5G, according to him. Um, and then China can say, well, we're well, sorry about that, but we do have all your medicine and weapons. We make all your medicine and your weapons, and what are you going to do about that? You know? Um, that's one way of looking at it. Maybe someone wants me to see it like that. I don't, I don't quite know. Anyway, there's, there's the propaganda in the UK was stay home, save lives, which is very clever and very manipulative and very subtle. And most people I know fell for it. It's like, do you want to meet up? 
oh, good luck killing people. You want to spread the virus, you want everyone to die, because most people just get swept up in herd think and herd feel and don't think or look at other sources of information, like Dr. Bakhti at the University of Mainz in Germany, one of the best universities in the world, who said from the very, very start, the lockdown was totally insane and there's no reason to do it. And countries who haven't done it, there's, there's no correlation proved between countries who've done things and how the virus has hit them. Viruses aren't scared of, of, <laughs> of little rules we put in. And again, this virus has, hangs in the air for three hours and has been known to travel four metres on a bus in Italy. So the whole two metre social distancing thing is totally insane. So, we've talked about Black Lives Matter a little bit and all the middle class, middle class um, white activists in the UK violently tearing things up. I know a, um, a lot of the Black Lives Matter marches were peaceful, like in Trafalgar Square, but you don't see that. An agent on the media, an agent provocateur is sent to make these peaceful protests. Um, very violent. Um, mind you that <laughs> Black Lives Matter seem to be um, violent enough already. Maybe not quite as much as Antifa, who stand for anti-fascists who the FBI have declared as a terrorist organisation. These anti-fascists who go out and beat up anyone of any age, gender, colour, who want to hear people centre centrist politics talk. You know, if they shut things down, these people are total maniacs um, and let's talk about <laughs> the psychological experiment of Chaz for a little bit so their journalist went to interview Raz the warlord who in charge of Chaz he was basically immediately mugged all his stuff was taken and he ran for his life and was eventually rescued by the police so in Minneapolis they have actually defunded the police so we'll see where that goes all the criminals in the world are going to go or in America are going to go straight to Minneapolis obviously um, so if you go on the Black Lives Matter website the first thing the first two things they say and I'm not making this up, you can look it up it says defund the police and, and destroy capitalism to me they sound like the sort of things that you say when you were 17 and you've done a media and cultural studies degree and you've been indoctrinated into cultural Marxism and you're a total moron but apparently they're um, serious political, cultural propositions, and Black Lives Matter are gaining steam and becoming a political party in the USA, so uh, so nothing to worry about there. So let's see how it all plays out in Chaz. Right, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, are a totalitarian evil regime, okay? They are shameless. They do not give a shit about racism. They <laughs> they do honey traps on people. They get very powerful people to sleep with prostitutes, and yeah, very young prostitutes, and secretly film it, and then they've got them by the gonads, or they give people massive amounts of money, you know, um... The corruption's quite astonishing, and you can research the CCP for yourself. And again, China's silent takeover is an, is an excellent um, video on this. Um, I'm not just talking about Trump saying China, China folks, the problem's China. Um, so 1984, Meets Brave New World is unfolding, and very few people are speaking out about it, and the people who are, like Dr. Buttar, B-U-T-T-A-R, are getting censored taken off YouTube even though they know a lot about medicine Dec and the, the White House physician is requesting them um, but I think the creepiest thing is the whole Black Lives Matter mil militant fascistic um, mass takeover of the world <laughs> or society here um, the dangers of communism guys like I used to be a bit dismissive of people who talked about the dangers of communism, but the st statistics are about 100 million people died from communism in the last century, which is a cliche and sounds, you know, unimaginable, but that's if the Holocaust figures are to be believed, that 6% of, um, yeah, 6% deaths in the Holocaust compared to communism where it's Cambodia or China or you know wherever it's wherever it's ugly head is um, reared out now in a in Seattle so last thing I'll say is Dr. Buttar takes this quite far and quite seriously again the White House physicians are requesting him for he's a very 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 distinguished doctor he says this is a deliberate ploy to destroy the human race <laughs> and that if we don't wake up to it soon 
um, that goal will be achieved. Again, this sounds conspiratorial and things are dismissed as conspiratorial, but I will close on reminding you what John F. Kennedy said, one of the widely acknowledged to be one of the greatest presidents and horniest presidents, admittedly, of all time, but still, people say he's a, a decent guy. He said, quote, there is a conspiracy, a, a network of secret, secret societies that, that have a very, very nefarious malevolent plans for you. And if you don't think things like that happen, then you are very naive. Like, I don't buy every conspiracy theory, but I don't believe in coincidence theory all the time either, you know? It's naivety to think these things don't happen and that there aren't malevolent people in the world and that they don't hatch plots. I'm not saying all this is that, but I'm sick of the just mass conformity, bowing to fascism, cognitive dissonance, like people wearing masks, which Dr. Buttar says is very detrimental to your health because you get oxygen deprivation and he, think, he thinks it's a deliberate ploy to immune to suppress the immune system. He also thinks, fact, I'm not saying I agree with this, but he also thinks some vaccinations... So babies develop an immune system around six months, right? They give vaccinations when the baby's one day old, full of um, various immunosuppressants. You know? Um, look this, again, look, Dr. Buttar, look this stuff up. It's very strange. And Bill Gates owns the patents on coronaviruses, going back a few decades, and patents on potential cures. His family has got a long history and interest in eugenics. He's on video talking about depopulation a few years ago. Anyway, guys, all very interesting. Um, just want to open a few doors there because I'm sick of seeing us bowing to fascism, uh, just because it's got a pretty wig on. And please let me know what you think. Subscribe. I don't know how long Google will allow me to exist. It's longer on Facebook and YouTube, but We'll see how it gets. Bye-bye.